Hello, everyone. My name is Andrea, and I work at the REACH Museum in Richland, Washington. And we are excited to celebrate World Fish Migration Day with you today. And we have with us today, Ralph Lampman, and he works for Yakima Nation Fisheries and their Pacific Lamprey Project. And he is going to talk to you about the plight and curious life of an ancient vampire fish. So thanks for joining us, Ralph, and go ahead and take it away. Happy World Fish Migration Day. Um, thank you for joining us here. Uh, I just started playing with these backgrounds and you know, these are the land frame and species. Uh, you can have a little fun with lamprey mouth. These are um, done by Davey Lovely from our staff. Um, all right, let's see. Let me just go with this background. Um, and I'll start a presentation here. Start from there. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you for joining. Um, my name is Ralph Lamplin, and I like to say I really like salmon, but I love lamprey. You can find me looking for them in any given day, stream, river, lake, or an ocean bay. Some people eat them raw, but I cook them on my spit. I love them so much that I go into a fit. Even though salmon biologists don't like to admit when it comes to anatomy, this fish is legit. Um, that's my introduction. I work for Yakima Nation Fisheries. I'm the lamprey research biologist. And today I wanna share a little bit about Pacific lamprey, their biology, um, their you know, importance and, and threats that they face currently. Uh, what happened? Oh, oh, here we go. Hey. So, um, I also want to give a shout out to the World Fish Migration Day. Uh, this it's actually happening this Saturday on October 24th. There's a lot of events happening uh, all over the world, 350 locations uh, in many countries. Um, a lot of a lot of these events are, um, you know, done remotely uh, because of COVID. But but there's still a lot of exciting ones you can check out. Um, there's also a fish song contest. Um, the finalists will be announced uh, on that day, and documentaries and discussion forums. So please check it out. Um, on the 24th, uh, there's a series of events happening. Throughout the day, um, this is Central European time, so I put out the Pacific Standard Time on the left here. Uh, so starting around midnight, going all the way to the afternoon, and and we'll be uh, sharing a video about the lamprey also on the 24th uh, at 10 a.m. So after 10 10 a.m., you'll still have a chance to check out a couple of these events. <laughs> Um, you know, for fish, uh, migration is really important. They, they use the river to get to, you know, all the places for spawning and rearing. And, uh, but there's a lot of dams, as you can see in this slide. Um, you know, these are just the dams on the main stem Columbia Snake River, you know, 14 to 15 dams on each, each of these rivers. There's over 250 dams, you know, if you look at the smaller tributaries. So there's lots of things that kind of gets in the way um, for fish like lamprey. Um, this star shows kind of where the Pacific lamprey um, distribution ends right now because there's no passage above Grand Coulee Dam. But historically, they were able to go much, much further, you know, up into the British Columbia, Canada. Um, so, so those are some of the issues that lamprey face. Um, so now, you know, this is what Pacific lamprey looks like up close. 
you know, a lot of people might think of Star Wars characters. They're really unique and different. Um, I tend to think of them, um, they remind me of uh, babies in my case. Um, I'll explain that in a little bit. So uh, my first son, Micah Lampman, his middle name is Pacific Lampman, just to make it sound like Pacific uh, Lamprey. My, my wife was okay with that. Um, there's a lot of similarities between babies and lamprey. You know, one thing they're nocturnal, you know, active at night. Um, that's when they roam around and um, that tends to be the case with babies too. Uh, they're both great at sucking um, and uh, they're parasitic to their host, you know, uh, their moms in, in the case of babies. And they're really impossible to read their mind. Um, it's hard to tell what they, they're thinking. And so that's my job as a research biologist, trying to figure out, you know, what, what secrets they have under their sleeves. Uh, and Micah was a surprise baby. He, um, uh, I, I was starting to take these lamprey pills from Japan and, and it had some, um, uh, unintentional consequences after I started taking these. So, uh, you know, lamprey, a lot of people tend to think of lamprey as an ugly fish, um, but I just want to make the case that, you know, really depends on, you know, what you look at. If you really zoom in on, you know, our mouth, it's pretty ugly as well. And we, we tend to focus kind of on this one part of their body parts, but you know, we need to look at the overall, um, you know, the big picture. And, and if you actually observe them underwater, you actually never see these teeth because they're always sucked on and they're actually pretty, pretty cute in, in my opinion. There, uh, there's a lot of unique things about lamprey. Um, they don't have any bones. Uh, they have a cartilage similar to sharks. Uh, they only have a couple, um, types of fins, dorsal fins and caudal fin, the tail fin. Um, they have these gills on their sides. That's where how they breathe um, and nostril just on their top of their head. Um, they, they're really old species, um, ancient species that go way back. You know, dinosaurs are about 200 million years old, um, but they're actually 450 million year, years old. Um, so they go way, way, way back. So if you think of lamprey, um, you know, as a hundred year old grandpa and grandma, humanity is basically a two week old baby. Uh, so we're still wearing diapers and um, we only know how to cry. Uh, so that's how much, you know, lamprey have seen all the changes that happen on earth. You know, lots of mass extinction events has happened at least four to five and they have survived all all those things and pacific lamprey is one type of lamprey species there there are many other species uh, in the northwest uh, these are some examples uh, most of them are a little smaller than the pacific lamprey some of them only live in the in the freshwater rivers and streams so they're they stay pretty small uh, I just want to note that there's lots of different species. And, you know, you might wonder, you know, why do we need Pacific lamprey? There's a, um, if you break it down into, um, you know, the key things, there's four things I want to stress. Uh, one is that, you know, they're really important for the tribes, uh, important food source, uh, medicine. Uh, this is from Willamette Falls where they harvest lamprey. Many of the tribes go there to harvest lamprey. Um, but but it's, they're not only important for humans, but also for many other species, um, you know, mammal species, bird species, fish species. They, they depend on lamprey um, at, you know, at various uh, life stages of the lamprey. Um, they're also considered to be important uh, in reducing the salmon predation that occurs. There, you know, things like sea lions and 
you know, bird predators, um, they actually, a lot of them would prefer lamprey because they're easier target. They're slow swimming and, but they're really high in fat and calories. So, um, you know, if we had more lamprey, it would help reduce the predation that we're seeing on salmon. But there's also the role that larvae plays. Um, we're starting to know more about them, but they're, they're basically like an earthworm underground and they're doing a lot of nu nutrient recycling, um, which helps other species. And, you know, just to um, stress the point about how they're important for the, the tribal nations, they're, um, they historically, they were harvested and they're smoked or dried. And um, sometimes they're called Indian hot dogs where they would cut them up and put them in hot dog buns and eat them that way. Um, yeah, they're just a really important food source for, for the tribes. And, and there's also cultural stories um, that are told about lamprey. Um, uh, but it's not, you know, Native Americans that that would that feed on lamprey. They're, you know, all over the world. It's a delicacy, uh, you know, in Euro Europe and Asia. These are some of the pictures of some of the recipes. Um, they have like sausages and stir fry, many, many recipes. My, my favorite, personal favorite is, uh, the raw lamprey. Um, it tastes just like salmon when they're raw. And, and they're, you know, considered a superfood because they're really high in nutrition. Probably they're, they're you know, um, one of the most nutritious seafood in the world. They're really high in vitamins, you know, minerals, fatty acids. Basically, if you just eat one lamprey, which is about 400 grams, you meet most of the you know, the daily intake needs uh, for the day. Um, and there's some of the things like vitamin A and B12, omega-3, you know, which are your um, healthy fat, um, which are important for your brain functions. It's really, really high. So, um, you know, they're actually, in terms of calorie, they're smaller than salmon, full-size salmon, but they have about the same amount of calorie. And in terms of nutrients, they're, they're actually much, much more nutritional than salmon. But there's a lot of, you know, unwanted stereotypes and biases coming from sea lamprey. Um, in the Great Lakes, uh, they, after the canal uh, was built, um, they were able to get into some of these um, Great Lakes and uh, they started, you know, feeding on some of the fish that didn't really evolve with, with lamprey. So um, it has been an issue over there. So they're considered evil species. There's a few shows you can see about lamprey. Um, there's a blood lake uh, video you can see on Netflix. Um, uh, so lots of uh, bad reputation from there, but but you know Pacific lamprey uh, here in the Northwest are they're native and they're as native as they can get. You know they were here first, and salmon were the ones that kind of came in later. If you look at the evolutionary history, um, there's three different life stages, um, main life stages of lamprey: um, larva, juvenile, adult. Um, Sometimes they're called amicete or macrothalmia. Those are just um, hard to pronounce and spell names that lamprey biologists use just to sound smart and intelligent. But um, they really change um, as they transform into like the juvenile, their filter feeder as a larvae. Then they start to get their teeth um, and, uh, and then they head out to the ocean and feed on the blood of other uh, host fishes. Their life cycle is pretty long. Uh, like uh, I show example of coho salmon here. They're, those are about three years old, typically. Um, Pacific lamprey are at least 10 years old. Uh, they spend a long time in the freshwater and then they head out to the ocean and they 
we used to think that they only spend two to three years, but now we're finding out that the norm might be five to six years um, based on some of the genetic work we've done. Um, so they could be, you know, 12, 13 years um, um, for their, you know, when their whole life cycle is pretty long. They're considered uh, keystone species, indicator species, or ecological engineer. You know, usually those, those terms are reserved for like salmon or beavers, you know, which make, they make beaver dams and really change the habitat, but lamprey really does all those things. I wanna hit those points in the next few slides. Uh, these are just examples of the host fish that lamprey feed on. They feed on, you know, fish that are a little bigger than themselves and they feed on the blood and body fluids. They don't necessarily kill the host fish, um, kind of like your blood donation. You know, you, you get a little blood and that really doesn't affect you. It, it might, you know, weaken the fish a little bit um, and that really depends on uh, you know, how much blood is taken, but, uh, but they're really um, opportunist feeders. So whatever is really abundant in the ocean, that's really what they go after. So they, in a sense, they're helping, you know, keep the food chain in, in check and making sure the top predators are not out of, you know, out of balance. This is a video of the adult lamprey. Uh, spotting the male sucking on to the female's head, swelling its tail, and they do a little dance. And uh, the female, they think they're pretty small, so hard to see, but they, um, they release them in, into this uh, nest called Red. And uh, these are kind of the nest, kind of what they look like. Basically, pizza-shaped hole in the ground, pretty similar to salmon, um, but you'll see kind of smaller rocks and sand in, in those hole, and that's where they lay their eggs. This is the um, kind of the early life stage when, when after they get, the eggs are fertilized, they hatch in about a couple weeks, um, and then it takes another couple weeks for them to become feed-ready larvae. As you can see on the lower left, the lower right is the pro larvae, uh, still has a yolk sac attached, so they're still feeding off of that. Uh, this is the pro larvae, just right after they hatch. Oops, if you go back. Uh, let's see. So at the Um, but that's what um, what they look like at the pro larvae stage, really small, about one centimeter or less than one centimeter at this stage. Um, and then when they turn into larvae, they're underground, so you don't really see them much. Um, they're kind of like earthworm. Uh, they're feeding off of the uh, detritus, you know, things that are breaking down like leaves and or salmon carcass. Um, during the day, they tend to burrow further down. Um, so they, they, you know, help till this, the, the silt and sand and, you know, aerate it, you know, adding oxygen, making it a better place for other, you know, bugs and other things that live in the fine sediment. Um, this is a video of the larvae. Um, when you release them in the river or stream, they go right down into the sediment. They, they know that they're easy predator. They, they just look like a worm. Um, so they go right into the fine sediment to hide from predators and, and that's where they do their feeding. This is a cartoon, um, you know, uh, look at, you know, what the lamprey does, um, you know, in the stream and rivers. From, this is from Japan, but um, you know, organic matter comes into the rivers and streams and 
you know, they, they're, uh, they get digested by, you know, things like lamprey and then they get nutrients get recycled and, and then they, you know, float downstream. Uh, so lamprey are basically like a microbe in your gut and you need these important uh, microbes to have healthy poop. And it, if you don't have those, you're going to have diarrhea. So, you know, basically, you know, rivers and streams without the, these important species, uh, you're just going to have a bad, you know, digestion, you know, um, yeah, really, really need those microbes, the, those good, important things in your gut to have healthy digestive system. And, and it's the same for rivers and streams. So they're considered keystone species in that aspect. Um, but they're also a keystone species because there's many predators that uh, depend on lamprey. These are just some of the um, well-known predators um, that feed on lamprey. Um, these are some of the action shots. You can see um, a lot of bird and fish and mammal species depend on lamprey. Uh, this is an eagle, bald eagle, uh, snatching a lamprey from a sea lion, um, or seal, I'm sorry. You can see uh, it had an opportunity to grab it, just went right for it and snatch it out of the mouth of the seal. Um, in Japan, they're also considered an indicator species, and that's because they really use all the different habitat that rivers and streams offer. So like the adults are more into the fast water habitat, kind of deep uh, pools and riffles where they can hide. Uh, the larvae likes the slow water habitat, you know, with the sand and silt. Um, and then, you know, the, they're for holding, you know, spawning, they, they also feed, uh, go to the shallow water uh, gravel habitat. So they really need all these, you know, not only the habitat, but also the different types of sediment, you know, rocks, silt, boulders, gravel, they need all of those. And salmon are usually happy with just gravel, but lamprey really needs all these diversity of uh, rocks and silt. But lamprey numbers have dropped down, um, you know, compared to historic historical numbers. Uh, this is from uh, Bonneville Dam and McNary Dam. Uh, you can see, you know, in the early 1900s, uh, the numbers were more abundant. Uh, and right now, it looks really low. Like if you look at McNary Dam, the red line there, if this was a human pulse, you, you could probably say they're pretty much dead. Um, there's just not enough fish that are getting you know, further upstream in the Columbia River. And there's a long period where um, they just stopped counting lamprey because they're just too many and uh, they didn't see the importance. So we don't have data for a long period. Um, and there's many, you know, what caused the decline? There's, there's definitely a lot of different sources of uh, threat, you know, issues that have caused this. Um, you know, passage, uh, dewatering, like in uh, divergence, uh, happens a lot in canals and uh, there's invasive species, um, you know, bass and, um, uh, you know, northern pike minnow, they're native, but they're still abundant in a lot of the dam reservoirs. Um, you know, host species that they depend on in the ocean are getting depleted. Um, water quality issues, um, you know, lots of issues, but uh, here in the Yakima Basin, you know, there, all these issues are present. So, you know, but we're hoping by, by doing the restoration work here in a basin like Yakima Basin, if we can restore them here, we think it will be, it'll set a good example, you know, uh, worldwide. So um, that's what we're striving for. Uh, you know, some of the threats that lamprey face as adults are passage. This is uh, Bonneville Dam. You can see all the lamprey congregating in the corner. They're just not a fast swimmer. 
And when you have these 90 degree corners, they're not able to use their mouth to suck their way um, up. They, um, they just, just can't latch on on those corners. This video uh, shows, oops, shows an example of what, what that looks like. Really, Hey, Ralph, I'm just going to yes. pop on for a second and just let you know that when you play the videos, we can't hear you. So you might have to oh. talk either before okay. or after the videos. Okay. okay. Sounds Thank good. Thank you. Thanks. Um, this is, uh, uh, these are lamprey passage structures that are being built. Uh, it started at Bonneville Dam and now they're being built in Tribs as well. Here in um, the center picture is Prosser Dam. We have these vertical wetted wall. It just has a little bit of water that comes down and lamprey are able to suck their way up. So um, these are really helping lamprey pass. Now over 50% of the fish are using these small little pathways, um, passage routes for that are made for lamprey. Uh, and just to show what that looks like, um, this is the lamprey climbing up, up these vertical wetted walls. Um, as you can see, it takes a little bit of effort for them to get up, but normally, you know, it takes hours and days for these lamprey to pass down. So, you know, compared to that, this is a really easy path for them to climb up. Um, for larvae, there, there's other issues that they face, like this is um, lamprey getting desiccated and dying, you know, drying up and dying on the banks in canals. They're, they're really small, um, like the the you know newborn lamprey larvae are uh, really tiny. Like I said, you know less than a centimeter. So a lot of these uh, fish screens are built for salmon. Um, so you know what's small enough for salmon to be um, prevented from going through fish screens. Lamprey are um, they just go right through. Uh, so that's an issue for lamprey. Uh, we, we don't have a solution yet, but we're working on ways to, to reduce the entrainment in these canals. Um, this is a video of lamprey just drying up on, in one of these canals in the Yakima Basin. Oops. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's freezing, so I'll just skip do that one. Um, so we're doing a lot of work. Um, Yakima Nation Fisheries has been, uh, you know, one of the leaders uh, to try to restore lamprey. We, we do what's called translocation, where we pick up the lamprey, adult lamprey, from lower Columbia dams, and we bring them to the Yakima Basin, Wenatchee, and Mittal Basin to let them spawn. Um, we uh, rescue the fish that are in canals. We do artificial propagation uh, to rear them and, and we're uh, doing some work to release these larvae as well. Um, just, uh, just to give you a quick overview of uh, uh, the activities. And our goal is really to bring back lamprey, you know, back to this this state where they, when they used to be more abundant, this is from Lamet Falls, uh, 1913. Uh, so over a hundred years ago, but 
uh, they were just, uh, you know, you can walk on top of their back in some of these rivers and streams. Um, that's what we hope to bring back, uh, with, which will be good for salmon, you know, good for the tribes and really good for the whole ecosystem. This is my son um, eating lamprey. Um, I think he was one or two years old at this time. He had a cracker in his hand, um, but uh, he really preferred the lamprey. So, you know, if babies are, you know, if they like lamprey, that, that must mean it's really good for them. I'll show that. If I can show that video, I'll play that here. And uh, yeah, it was served at down in Kokil River. There's a South um, South Coast Lamprey Summit, and we had a chance to harvest lamprey and cook them and it was really delicious. So we really hope, you know, the tribes um, have a chance to, you know, um, to serve lamprey, um, you know, not just for a ceremonial feast, but also, you know, it used to be more of a daily feed. And, and so we hope that we could bring that back. I want to thank the uh, Pacific Lamprey team members, uh, Tyler Beals, Davey Lumley, Sean Gowdy, Shekinah Saluskin. Uh, these are part of our team and they do uh, a lot of the work. So with that, I want to open up to questions. And I also put my contact info if there's any questions. We, we do have um, a public out, outreach events where we um, show these adult lampreys and larval lampreys and uh, when we do translocation we try to invite the public um, we weren't able to do that this year due to covid but um, hope we can do that soon thank you thank you for joining us ralph i'm a vampire blood sucker parasite and many people want us simply out of sight but we have the right to fight the plight and hope down the road you'll see the light. We've been around for 450 million years, so stop the smear and don't you miss here. We were up here long before the dinosaurs appeared. Can't say this without a tear. You know I'm a sucker naturally, but don't you dare judge me. I have a function on this planet. Now can't you try to understand it? We bring back the ocean's rich nutrients to serve our fellow constituents. We need clean water, just like your son and daughter. We need city kids slaughter. All my sons and daughters live on, live on. It's the of the land for your survival. Live on, live on. Forget about all this neglect and depravel. Live on, live on. We deserve our own survival. Live on, live on. Forget about putting us in a store archival. As a juvenile, I'm seeking for my meat. Superstitious creep. I feel the female being trite. I'm bored of my identity crisis. My digestive system is weak. Eating everything wants to eat. Fish buried in my mouth's garbage. I'm still alive in the fruit season. The single eggs won't stop me from eating. As I get into the streets, I'm living on. I'm so living on. Living on, 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 living on. Living